Right, My so mic, you don't hear a fan, right? Uh, no. Okay. Pretty good. All right. Oh, yeah, I was going to say the beginning we don't need, part. Yeah, we don't need pick Ben if you're, yeah, because you wanted to just play Ezreal for this, uh, yeah, yeah, this, oh, I, this episode, I, this session, sorry. So it's going to be, um, yeah, standard. Like, if you're going to pick up Ezreal, you can pretty much pick him into any comp and solo queue, and you don't really, this is kind of cool. I forgot, yeah, it's, yeah, um, you'd use it for I your have my, yeah, I had my overlay on, and I took everything off but it, and I was like, Except oh, that, there, yeah, right there. nice. All right. You guys aren't at the Elo yet, where you start a camp, right? No. Yeah, I don't trust the uh, support. support. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Unless you're Others, duo, unless you're duo with the support, you shouldn't. Then yeah, because yeah, then at least we know how to. You know, I'll take a few hits and then you know, you know what, stack the camp. I guess it's called. Mhm. Mm so you can just finish one off. Well, Make yeah, you kill you kill the first one. You tank the first two shots uh, as you kite it, and then you finish mm -hmm. the little one. If you're doing golems, and then the support tanks the rest of the shots. But if you have, if you're playing an ADC that has warlords, then you can tank three to four shots instead of just two, two to three. Okay. Gotcha. Depending, if you have feast, you can actually tank three with fervor still. But yeah, that's advanced shit. That unless you're going to be doing with a support, who knows how to do a camp until you're like maybe diamond three or so, mm -hmm. diamond two, diamond three, you won't really have to worry about it. All right, that's good. You want to click on the golem, and you want to see, like, you want to only leash it until it gets to maybe, like, 430 or so, 440. Because mm -hmm. then the enemy, or your jungler, has an auto and smite left. So then you staying is just extra time that you're wasting without getting okay. back to lane. Okay, so when Thresh comes into here, right, so he approaches from this side because he went toward the gromp. What I want you to do, well, who's their support? Their support is... Because oh, you didn't forget. tab, so. Uh, Lulu. For Lulu. for sure, hundred percent. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's fine. What you're gonna do is when he pressures this, you're gonna ping mm -hmm. here, and as soon as he starts walking here, you're gonna move to here. You're gonna place a ward. If Lulu's there, you can queue. If she's moved all the way up, you can auto queue, and then walk out this way so that Sivir's Sever boomerang doesn't hit you. Mm -hmm. Um, and then utilize this fog of war. Come back out with Thresh, where now he's in, in this position, and then you can actually trap them like this. And then you come out, abuse the Fog of War, you guys attack these minions, and they'll be pushing up. This one is more healthy than this. And yeah. anyways, you can auto this, actually. You can auto this one on your way. That's the better thing to do. So you can auto this one on your way, and then you have this melee moving up with you and Thresh, and th their minions just aggroed onto this. Or we'll okay. just re aggro onto the casters as you move up, and then you guys can take a very good trade here. <clears throat> okay. Especially considering. Oh, she came from behind. What the fuck? Uh, yeah, but that means that you could have had even more bush control together. So, that yeah, rough? that still applies. It's really bad by him to start hook. Um, but yeah, you can abuse the. Like, especially in this elo, Sivers and Lucians are not going to know. How to play against an ADC with even 50 more range than them? If you can, if you really know how to abuse it. So um, sure. even though Ezreal ob or Sivir obviously has their spell shield against a lot of Ezreal's shit, honestly, he still can win lane pretty hard against her, uh, depending on the supports. Um, mm -hmm. I'd say Lulu beats Thresh in a lot of scenarios, um, just because she is made to be the premier lane bully support. But in this one, I don't believe so because she's not giving a hyper carry a ton of attack speed. Um, Sivir only becomes a hyper carry when she has her items and then her uh, R. So okay. okay. Anyway, let's see. Uh, so how you played this? You don't really want to get pushed in by them because you do have bully pressure on them, like I was talking about earlier. Especially yeah. since Lulu came in late. Like you want to keep autoing this. You can legit sit here and then mm -hmm. auto auto. Like keep autoing. And you don't have to be at the very edge of your range. Because if you think about it, if this is, let's say, this is about 550 right here, okay? Mm -hmm. It's about 550. It's a rough drawing. But, um, like, out to actually probably here on that end, um, mm -hmm. if you just step there. But anyway, so if you overshoot these minions a little bit, then not only do you give yourself the option to hit them, but then when this one gets low and you know she's about to CS it, you hit her. Okay? Yeah. And that's, right. that's how you get early leads as an ADC. You have to, like you were talking to me about earlier, an ADC does have to do 
a lot more of the really specific intrinsic micro shit to get uh, an early lead against the enemy laner. Mm -hmm. I do like that you're focusing your CS when you have some pressure, though. That's good. That's very good to do. You're a perfect CS right now, which is awesome. There's a lot of plat ADCs that would actually instead focus on this trading so much that they would miss out on a ton of CS. And then the Sivir would actually be pushed in and get more CS than them. And she ends mm -hmm. up winning out. So, yeah, I would rather have you play to this extreme where you're just taking every CS that you can. But at the same time, I want you to be able to punish her. Also, punish. don't take the, the free ricochet damage. Because like yeah. I said, if you had been abusing this, right, and you had like actually shoved her off and then Thresh saw you were playing with confidence and moved up, then yeah. you can just use this area. And every time she ricochets, she has to decide either trade with you or if she pushes, you just shit on her with your audience. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so, I've been trying to trying to get myself a little farther up there, like you were saying. Yeah. I've been trying to do that in lane, you know, like the dominance. The, yeah, you know, like you of, saw yeah. you saw their jungler went from here to here, and he left. There's yeah. there's no one that's going to be coming down for you right now. His gank is going to be either to mid from here or in bot side. There's no way that you guys are going to get touched here. Mm -hmm. So you can definitely play aggro. We do. We, I believe we, we pick off Lulu in a second. Got you. That's good, but yeah, you took a lot of unnecessary damage on your health yep. because of those ricochets, and then you gave up all your lane pressure. And she's autoing, you need to start matching her autos. Because if uh, she keeps getting this push on you, then this lane is going to be tragic for you. You could get... You should honestly, the way this guy is playing especially, you should be able to have like a 15 to 20 CS lead just out of the first couple waves from uh, bullying him. Not the first couple, but like, you yeah. get what I mean. Probably the first yeah, 8 to 9. You. Yeah, I really wanted to put this one on there because I kind of autopiloted a little bit after the beginning of the lane phase. Yeah. I mean, even right now, the only part you're not autopiloting is your CS, really. If you mm -hmm. think about it. You're tr Okay. That could have yeah, been tragic. It, it, I'm going to tell you why that could have been tragic, okay? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I panic. If yeah. you look at this wave, like, if Lulu just legit, instead of autoing or sitting on here, if she just walks back a little bit, and your auto command and Thresh's auto command forces you to move up one extra unit, and then you start taking these minions, then you lose this trade really hard. Especially when the reinforcements come in, because that's when you guys start fighting. They have three extra casters. So look at these minions. Yeah. You start trading with her when all your minions are about to die, and she has an entire wave. This is a really bad trade to take, actually. It ends up working because they play even worse than you, and you yeah. end up inputting out of her Q. Like, if you didn't get out of her Q, that's their first oh, blood, yeah. and then they might kill Thresh also. So, that's just... That's actually lucky for you. I'm not even going to chalk it up to skill that you dodged it, because you shouldn't be taking that scenario in the first place. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, no, you're right. I knew, I knew it was slow. Plus, don't eat something. in. If you're already in that situation where Thresh just uh, hooked and he's about to go in, you want to play the edge of the range because he's max health and you're not. And he's your support. So you want to play this kind of like you would play a skirmish or like a team fight in a way. Because if you look at it... Here, I'll show you. Eating for damage here is really, really bad. Especially when you can save it to either get out or finish her off when you still have both your summoners if needed. <sighs> Plus, you probably ended up hitting a minion with it, if we go back and check. With stuff like this, where there's a shit ton of different variables, I like to go back and look at it over and over, so... Okay. Yeah. If we dissect it, especially since, as of right now, you only have one session, you're going to be able to get the most out of it. Because you'll be able to take the most notes. Okay. So, yeah. He committed, alright? What he just mm -hmm. did was hard commit, and you know that he can now look and keep looking. So what you want to do is your kite is going to go towards here so that she's still in your range and this Q is coming up so you can auto Q. And then you get yourself out of Sivir's range in that same way. So this turns into a 2v1 for like 3 seconds, right? Yeah. And that's an easy win for you guys. But as soon as you go into here, this is a 2v3 with these minions here. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I got you. I went yeah, it's the the engage period was dangerous with the the minion advantage they had on us. Yeah. It sure. was just Thresh was able to catch her slightly. Mm hmm You know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely, you know, risky. Well not risky, it was definitely luck. You could have just autoed that one by the way, because it was a little damaged beforehand. Oh wow. Okay. Here we do get her flash at least. <sighs> did she just not boomerang or did she? I didn't she no she she did, but because she flashed 
it it didn't hit me a second time. Oh, it true, like true, true, it yeah. like went okay. upward. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you. Okay. It went hard up. <clears throat> That's fine. She could have honestly autoed you one more time and flashed straight back and potentially had the kill, but that would be really advanced. He should be helping you push. You need to ping the minions to him here to help you push. Otherwise, you're going to get... Yeah, now you have to get frozen out. You have to leave. You can't stay here. Yeah, yeah I realized it at that point. Just take... Uh, get a tier, and then uh, two potions. I and I would I would tell you to get a pink here, okay? But their lane doesn't have as good of setup for Gragas until 6. And if you're just going to get the pink, you might set yourself a little too behind in um, itemization on her in uh, AD. Because if... Well... It's not just that. It's that you have a lane that can play. If you just play a little smart, there's no way Gragas can kill you, right? Because unless mm -hmm. Thresh moves up all the fucking way and then he just gets killed by them, which honestly that isn't... If he if he does and you guys are playing aggressive and the support gets killed, they're not going to know to dive you and you're still going to be able to pick up your CS at this elo. So, and you're playing Ezreal. And if Thresh is playing even a little bit smart, then he's not going to die either because he's going to be yeah. able to lantern you. He's going to walk out when he senses a gank coming. So the pink ward doesn't do as much for you because even if you had this pink, like let's say here, does Panth like I don't even know if these guys have um, ignite or TP or what because you haven't tabbed at all. So if they have TP, then that's the only way this would help. But even then, you should be playing smarter when you're pushing up. So mm -hmm. like you wouldn't you wouldn't be giving them the TP opportunity unless they were in the lane and you know that your laner can disrupt them. So then you could trade. Gotcha. So it, it like. Looking at the rest of the map is really important. Like Uzi, the he's honestly, in my opinion, the best AD carry in the world, and even mm. he F keys as an ADC, like F one, F two, F three, F four, yeah. um, to is, track on his lanes. Is there is there a way to like set it so one of them isn't on you? Yeah, if you go, if you press escape and you just leave the uh, select cell or whatever, mm. um, just make that the space bar, which it already is, but it's like it a is, different yeah. command. Yeah. So because then, sometimes, sometimes you know, F one through four will be good. And then sometimes, you know, it'll put you on one of those four. No, so what you want to do is you take all your teammates. When you press tab, you can move them around. So you move okay. them top, jungle, mid, ADC support. And then you change your F1, like, into the space bar or whatever. And then you do F1 is top, F2 is jungle, F3 is mid, F4 is your support. If you're playing ADC. Okay. Gotcha. If you're playing other roles, obviously, it switches up a little bit based on um, where you are on the map, but... Uh, Cause like the F key would switch, but let's uh go let's back to a little. Yeah. Yeah. I even though I only had a tier, I don't know why I felt confident. No, you we can. Yeah, I mean, you have you have fervor, and they're just aggroing onto Thresh with you getting free damage onto Sivir. That's fine. I think I should have clicked the lantern there. I just had my E. Yeah, you should have. You should have clicked the lantern for sure. Because it refreshes that's the, the that's shield. That's thing no? you could have done uh, much much better there. But other than that. I think honestly, you taking the trade when Thresh was um, getting aggroed on is good. Don't don't like, don't think. Oh, my aggression here isn't good just because I have tier and she might have long swords, right? Like, and you didn't even tap to see what you got actually. So no. yeah, that's one thing that you need to. Uh, I'll stop saying yeah. it for now, but um, at I the end of the session, you. just remind yourself, write it down, make sure that you remember you have to start tabbing more as a just general thing. But anyway, yeah. Um, when you Look at a situation like that. You have to be able to see it objectively and say, okay, yeah, they're aggroing onto Thresh, and I do still have a little bit of damage from my fervor that I can apply, um, and her longsword advantage won't really mean as much. And even if she has warlords, it won't mean as much if. Uh, and since it was happening so far behind the the line, I was able to just can land cues with no problem. Uh huh. Wow. Let us two v three over here. That's one of the reasons I wanted to do this because like. It was kind of a little bit of a, cl a clown fiesta from both sides. Well, this is like, point. you should have the game by the nuts right now. Like, there's, yeah. you should not lose this game. I've wasted my ulti there. Yeah, so you really wasted your ult. Here you I should, stayed you autoing just, just, to try, just to save Master You need to leave. You can't. Oh my god, dude. You have no Grievous Wins on him. He has full HP. He's not going to die. Watch this. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> oh my god. I'm oh, sorry. This was ridiculous. I almost died for it. But I was just so sad I had no mana. You shouldn't have chased once he got to like here. Because they could have had someone coming up from behind. Or Pantheon could have altered onto you or something. Yeah. <sighs> there it is. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. See? I did that.
If I would have just let him go, I would have gotten, you know, the benefit of him. Yeah, you would have gotten the benefit of your mid laner getting to push. She wouldn't have come down to try to save you. And then on top of that, you um wouldn't have given you up. Get the, the, you get the you get the double kill advantage, you get the kill off Gragas. Uh, you guys have complete control of the game. You just went for a little too much. Mm, yeah, agreed. Um I wanna see how much gold you had. Cause you might have a, a different buy than this in this scenario. Okay. Hmm. So I, I sometimes nah, tend to I don't go think, for the Iceborne. The only but... other thing I, I could see you doing... No, you wouldn't finish the Iceborne first. I was thinking, hmm. like, a lot of times, as Ezreal, you'll still get the Sheen after tier, or, like, before you get the Mirror Mana. Yeah. Um, Just trying to see if I could have gotten the Sheen with a pickaxe, Yeah, pick I was right? thinking maybe, yeah. sh like, I don't I don't think you go Sheen with pickaxe here, though. Because you need, you need a tier 1 boot versus this, and with your current lead, and the way this, like, this lane dynamic and the team comps mm -hmm. play out. So this is okay, yeah. Going the Mirror Mana and getting a tier 1 boot is fine. And it'll give you good offensive power too. Mirror Man is really nice against Sivir because it gives you the flat AD for your auto attacks. Instead of like, you know, you're depending on the Sheen proc, which unless you like shoot it somewhere else and then use your auto attack to proc it, she can spell shield the Sheen proc from far away. Yeah. So, yeah, this is good. You're going to be able to stack it really fast. I'd say here you should definitely go blue build. Yeah, I do. I didn't want to get. I didn't want to let the the Swain or the Pantheon get too close to me, or the rest of the team. Like honestly, your team sure. has a lot of damage already. If you look at it, right? Like mm. even though your teammates might, you don't want to rely on them necessarily. You have to still respect the team comp and play within it because that's going to give you the the um, biggest possible chance of winning. He actually could have fought that because Lulu didn't have six and he did, and she wasn't going to get any dead minions to hit the six. So you guys had double six against them, and uh, yeah, you could have fought it. I think. Yeah, I Pantheon, stepped up. Pantheon doesn't have all. He's top. So yeah, there's no, there's no like extra variable that would come by. One more time. What did you no, say? I, I, yeah, I saw him step up, so I was you know able to step up and ready. It's just I think he was just afraid of his HP. Uh huh. The, the thrush. Yeah, I feel that. That's fine. But yeah, I was just saying in uh, in regards to him, you could have uh, definitely stepped up there for. If any support mains are watching the ADC coaching for whatever reason. <laughs> <clears throat> but alright. I improved a lot as a well an ADC when I uh when I couldn't get my role, because I understood finally what like my support wanted me to do. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's it's good to to see uh your role from a couple different scenarios. Oh Here, this is I really bad to do. Trade, yep, look then... at this fog of war. If... Like imagine Gragas is anywhere in the river right now. Yeah. You would just get real, dude. Like the thing is even if, okay, if he's right down here, like, you're just straight up dead, right? And if he's in somewhere else in the river and they know your E is down for the next 20 seconds, if he's smart enough, he just comes down and straight up dives you guys. Look at your health. They can push you off the tower and you lose the next two, three waves. Yeah. So, yeah. That's one, yeah, I, that's one, that, that's one place where you definitely can't be aggressive. Because, again, they had the minion advantage and there was way too much fog of war around them for you to take that. Your CS numbers are pretty low, but I'm going to chalk a lot of it up to the pointless death that you had in the Fiesta that happened bot. So if you fix that, then I think your CS would be a lot better looking here. Yeah, I just... Move up there I into just, the Fog of War. You need to start pinging him off if he moves yeah. up like that. Yeah. One more time, though. What were you saying? Um, yeah, I need to... I always try to... I always seem to have an, an okay, I guess, CS early on. And then it just turns into a into a slight problem because like once I start getting kills and the momentum goes, I well, just the have thing to, is like, that happens with a lot of AD carries back. right now because they have to group with their team and it's all about team play, and yeah. so they start to lose out on some CS and a lot of times like the top laner or anyone that's going to be uh, splitting just cleans up the waves so that you don't get a disadvantage. Yo, you got to leave here, man. Why did she step up? I don't know. I I was waiting for my heal. I was and saying I, I, I leveled up and healed at the same time. See, because I didn't see Pantheon here at first, and then I was looking straight down here for your input. So I was thinking he's just gonna fucking Goomba stomp you again. Uh Okay, so you made the incorrect decision of staying, okay? Mm, this yeah. is really fucking weird, man. Your decision making is like nothing I've ever seen out of a plot ADC. <laughs> okay. I, I I don't I don't know what it is. I'm 
I don't know if it's my decision. I think it's your Azra. early decision making is like so I, bad, and then somehow you end up salvaging it. But then a lot of like the, the last time you threw it. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. So here, yeah, it's okay for you to obviously go into her because Sivir walked away. But in the first place, you should be based. So I don't want you thinking yeah. that that was a good move. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. It it was a good out of a bad situation, but I shouldn't have been in that situation. Exactly. Just, I'm glad yeah. you understand that. That's very good to understand. Mm. Usually, um. Players get to diamond just understanding that, so I usually only see it from diamond and up players. But lately, I've seen a lot yeah. of people. That's why I me, wanted to give you this game because, like, I do do some stuff that kind of looks nice, but at the same time, it's I, yeah. you know, it was a fuck up. I understand know? that there are a lot of times that yeah, you fucked up yeah. and you shouldn't have been in the situation initially. That's good. You That's should hold this wave since they just got pressured off and ping ye right now to the uh, like you need to ping ye now to the uh, dragon. Can, you can either ping it on the map or even spam. No, don't do this because if you say it's alive, then he might yeah, not. I messed, on it. I messed up really hard here because I was thinking in my back of my mind. I don't know. I was like, oh, I can freeze the wave, and then I re I, I noticed like her death timer, and I was like, damn. So like now is when I start realizing I have to. You know what I mean? Push the wave onto her. Well, tower. depending on if that dragon is dead, it might be okay to freeze the wave if you want to just save your ultimate. Mm -hmm. Or if, um, like, you and Thresh push, then that's okay. You guys can push together, and you don't need to use your ult. But here I would say just clear the wave and go right for the dragon, which is the guaranteed, like, give me, you know? Because Sivir's dead. She's gone. And Lulu is based. And then even if Gragas comes, it becomes a 3v1. Like, he's just fucking dead, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's, that's how you push your lead further there. You have to shot call that specific thing for your team, because that's the correct thing to do. I love the new Gragas ulti animation. I've been able to E out of so many of them. I have not seen a Gragas since the nerf, honestly, so I couldn't tell you. Here no I messed up. No I, one's I should have never. I should have never eat earlier, and then I needed to flash toward my try. I I flashed. Yeah, toward. I'm gonna go back over all of this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Might as well go back now. Yeah, I could have walked out with one kill or tried to double lift it like I did there, but. I don't ever forward. try to double lift anything intentionally. Like, if yeah. you put yourself in that situation because you fucked up initially, then fine, but you need to learn from that situation. And, like, yeah, yeah don't don't ever put yourself in this scenario to begin with if you don't need to. Learn the macro first, gain your elo with it. Your micro will come with it if you just keep playing, because your mechanics aren't bad. You just use them to do bad things, you know what I mean? Yeah, I so, got you. Okay, so from the very beginning, your first observation should be, this is a 4v3, okay? Yeah. And although Swain is going to die, he has already used his Q. So those are, you need to be thinking. Like, you you should be looking here. You shouldn't even scroll back to yourself when you're about to ult. Because you should see any cooldowns that they use. So you see Swain flashed, I think, and then she ulted. Um, yeah, you need to I, know what Gragas did. It's really important to know what Gragas did. Oh, shit, I was so using I, highlight. So I, know, so, yeah, so I know if he can eat at me, if I, you know, what's going to be able to hit me. Um, yeah, exactly. So you know yeah. what, what you're expecting when you come up, and you can see what Lulu used as well. That's mm. really, really important. If you want to double lift shit, this is how double lift does his shit, dude. Mm. He knows every cooldown that they've used already. This is how every good ADC, like, goes into a team fight. They know every cooldown that's been used. A lot of times they're waiting for specific cooldowns to be used before they mm. step in. You know what I mean? Yeah. So... Yeah, you E here without knowing what they have necessarily, at least all of them, only a couple. Because you didn't see as much. And then, like, you just get hit by this. And when you E forward, Lulu gets to just walk straight up and exhaust you. If she doesn't get that exhaust on you, that's a double kill. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's... Or you just clean sweep them. And then you have a tower and a dragon. The game is absolutely over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, trust... Yeah, I knew I messed that up there. I... That's why I wanted to put this game. Because, like, even I was wondering what the hell I was doing. Because I usually don't E forward. Unless I know it's an insta-kill. Yeah. I just thought, I at, at the moment, at the split-second decision, I thought they were going to run. Yeah, but what's really important to take out of this is to, yeah, to just know all of their, uh, okay, he didn't cool flash, I guess. But know all their cooldowns, yeah. Okay, yeah, you shouldn't E at all anywhere here. You should wait and see where their next input is. So, you didn't E. When they decided to turn before you E'd, okay? Mm -hmm. So, this was completely pointless. Because Point. Thresh is going to... Hook, like, missed this hook, I think, right? Did he miss it, or... No, he hit no, it on Sivir, yeah. It. He hit it on Sivir. Okay, that's really good, actually. So, Thresh is gonna hit the hook, and if you still have your E, you work your way around here, or around here, depending on if you see the Sivir getting hooked at the time of. Um, and then you can just put your damage down onto her, and Lulu's not in flash range of you, or exhaust range of you, right? You still have your flash, 
So after you kill Sivir, you turn on to Lulu, and then if Gragas tries to like ER you or anything like that, you can either outplay with Flash or I don't even think you need to, honestly. Because then it just becomes you and Thresh versus Gragas if you play yeah. it smart. And maybe Thresh is like down here if they focused him. And maybe your HP is like down here if they absolutely 100% focused you. So they don't really have lethal on e either of you guys if you just didn't E in there. Okay. It gets cleaned up, but yeah, it's, it was bad on my part. I could have cleaned it up myself with Thrush. Yep. I had done it correctly. Yeah, he, I don't know why I bought that, and I refunded it. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the heck. I forgot what ADC I was playing, I think. Um, <laughs> I think versus that team, yeah, you don't need uh, Zerkers. I would only go Zerkers on Ezreal if they have like two to three tanks. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't go Cloth Armor. You could go um, Mana like Crystal. Oh, okay. Don't be that afraid. You can get offensive power. And then you could you can pick up a pink here as well, because this bot tower is either gonna get taken or shoved really hard, and then like the dynamic of all this is changing now because the map's about to be pretty open, and you don't need mm -hmm. to leave a pink in your um try. in your try or in your bush here. You can mm -hmm. leave one in try, like just in case let's say Gragas does a cheeky like here and then invades and then loops out around, you know? Mm -hmm. Um through the dragon pit or something. So that's fine. But um, the one in the lane doesn't really need to be there. You can just leave a green ward in lane after you take this tower. You can just put a deep ward, like, right here or something mm -hmm. after you take the tower so that you see who they're approaching with if they're bringing anyone into the lane. And then that way you know if you have a numbers advantage in this lane or this lane when you go to Siege after you take the initial bot tower. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. All right. I typed them for them to, you know, push bot, and I was going to try to take Zero, mid. Use your W to give him attack speed there. But what were you saying? You typed to what? Oh, I was telling him to come, you know, help get the push or mid started sooner, but he took a little bit. Oh, okay. Since Did you see that text there that said blocked, so you know Pantheon was the one that was hit? Yeah. All right, cool, cool. Well, I saw him going there, so that's why I just kept throwing cues. You know, yeah, so that's damage. fun. Um, you should be taking Scuttle here, because the thing is, you're not going to be able to take it fast enough without anyone CCing it. And then there's oh. way too much going on in yep. terms of, like, rotations that you need to answer. So what you're going to do I here is you're going to clear this wave, and then you're going to go back to bot, and you're going to ping Ori to go mid. As soon um, as you do that. I was I didn't have vision of the river there, right? Yeah. So, so I actually hit if I don't know if you can go back to it. I hmm. hit the scuttle and I was actually trying to use it as a body shield. So if they were to throw anything at me. Like I don't know if that Oh, makes okay. Yeah. I like hit it and then I went under and around it. Okay. That's okay. I guess. Yeah, that's fine. I don't think any of them were coming that way. That's the only reason I wasn't advising it, but if you yeah. That's if you see a threat, then accommodate yeah, I was for just, it in your own I mind. was just worried, just in case, you know, because sometimes pantheons have no limit, so they're yeah. like anything they see, they just want to uh, go for it. I understand. Buttons. Um. Okay. So that's fine. You uh, should definitely take this tower here, and if they don't show, then you can just sneak the dragon. Honestly, he's gonna start it. So yeah. Give him what? Okay. What you're gonna do is if you give him this W, not only does it give him the attack speed, but you get the sheen proc onto this. Because you didn't hit anything with the Sheen proc, you know? So yeah. it's really useful to use it in that regard. You can take it away faster. <clears throat> Alright, after this, you're not going to base. You're going to go straight to mid. Because what's going to happen is, if you base, she just gets to take this wave and then the next. And it's pushed back out, and then it's still like a stalemate. You're not really using this advantage. But if you like let this push, so she's gonna have to stay here, and she can't help wave clear mid. Then you and Thresh go here, and then this is a three v one or potentially four v one if he joins you. And if Swain tries to defend, even if he has his ultimate, he'll probably die under tower or at least have to leave. You know. Yeah. So yes, yeah, I won't recall. Yeah, I I created I created pressure and a, a wave they had to deal with. And then, and you then didn't I didn't use it. Yeah. Anything before it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just created it so I could go buy buy and waste time. Yeah. Basically. You can get a Bork here because um get a get a pink too. You can go Bork third here because of uh Swain's HP. Well actually first you want executioners if no one else has Grievous Wounds on your team. Mm -hmm. Um and then you go Bork because Swain will have HP, Gragas will have HP, and then the Lulu ult is gonna give them HP as well. Even if it's support Lulu it'll be a little bit, yeah. but yeah, it, it still helps a lot with it in terms of damage I output. Tend, yeah, I tend to get the Bork usually third item. Mm -hmm. If, you know, like normally and then, you know, depending on if what it's, it's... If you're against a full squishy team, honestly, BT is really nice, but... BT. 
Yeah. I actually got that the game after. And there are a couple others, yeah. Like I told you before, we were talking before about the LW and all that. There's a lot of potentials for for Ezreal's third item, so. But he does synergize really well with Bork, so that's why you see in standard, um, a lot of Koreans go the Bork third. Because it's really nice for his fervor, it's really nice for his Q, because it applies the passive. And with the yeah, and with the with the new passive, it's actually a little, it's a little, it's a little nicer too. Mm-hmm. You get a little extra attack speed that yep. you usually don't get in blue build. Yep. Oh shit. Yeah, here I got the RNG bug where I ulted, but my mouse was near my portrait, so I shot my ulti down. That's not an RNG bug. If you're if you're hit, huh? clicking your if you're clicking this, then that's just yeah. Well, I don't, well, that's not a bug. It, There's a bug right now, this patch, that a couple people yeah. ran into, including myself, where you shoot a skill shot one way and it goes the complete opposite direction. Mm. But this isn't that, I don't think. Here, let me see where your click was. Because I clicked down hard and then I slide it back up. But And I, okay. I messed up because I wasn't trying to click R, period. That's where I fucked up. I clicked R by accident. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was trying to E. That's why I, I R. And that's then, fine. Yeah, I, I understand. I feel you. But what I want you to do here is yeah. I want you to have your cursor. I mean, you have it back here, but as soon as you like auto Q and your Q has gone off and then your auto command is still on him, you need to put your cursor back like pretty much here ready to E right away because you this is the fo- only fog of war that Gragas can come at you from right now. So when he comes in through this, then you should instantly be ready to E away from the ultimate, especially because that has such a long cast time now Yeah. that he has to point blank it like that. And you just give him the opportunity. Here, yeah, I could have lived, and I just stepped back toward it, stupid. And Swain, I believe, flashes. Yeah. Well, this is okay, but you have to assume he has flash. So flash. you just play it a little different. I'll show you how. Okay, I'll show you what range you should stay at. Right now... Okay, at, when this happens, when this happens, okay, she has him CC'd. Auto him one time and back off. Okay. Because now they're See? both in range. Now, now he doesn't have the... If you had backed off there, he doesn't have the room to flash into you. If he does, he dies before he kills you. Mm. And then, like, you're in range to still Q these two. So you're yeah. still putting out damage without dying after that. So you maximize your damage by getting that last auto in. And if you're not ready for that, you don't think, then you can start by just playing a little safer and towards your Q side when you're just um, low, okay? But you are utilizing your auto attacks in skirmishing so far. I didn't get to see that as an actual team fight, obviously, because you got caught in the very beginning. But, um, yeah, when you're when you're low, you don't have to worry about autoing as much if, it's, if you're against two tank front line that you can just Q. Um, what you can do here is you can... Cut down your HUD a little bit, and then click this at the, right there to close that. Close that out. Yeah, and then every open. time you want to check your stats, you can just press C or whatever you have as the um, binding for it. But yeah, I think that's your best bet here. Is um, if you don't want to like click that portrait again, close like make the HUD small. I only really have the HUD pretty big for champions I think- that I don't play as much, so I don't know their cooldowns inherently, right? So I'll, I'll still want to be able to see the cooldowns out of the corner of my eye. But yeah. otherwise, you don't really need that big a HUD. Well, actually, I think the HUD, I actually have it at, at zero. There's no it's way. Mine. This looks like This looks like about 40-ish from my side. Maybe it's the, maybe the your screen resolution, my 1080p, make, like, makes a difference in that regard, mm-hmm. but... Yeah, because I always keep it. Uh, if it's small, then tight. okay. Yeah, if it's if that's small for you, that's fine. But yeah, just close this out and then be really careful when you're clicking down towards here. Because the thing is, it's an inherent issue with your DI right now. But I wasn't. I don't know. Okay, we can talk DI right now. Um, sure. I was gonna do it after the session. Um, with DI, a couple of examples, sorry. but direct input. So okay. your your mouse clicks are way too far away from your champion in some scenarios. Like when when Gragas is here, and you are right here, and like. Your, your click range should be anywhere here. Mm-hmm. So you should not be anywhere near your HUD, especially since it was even further down than this when you had your screen yeah. center down there, you know? Um, but when you go really wide, it makes where you go, like, a little more inaccurate. Because mm-hmm. if, you, if you click close to your champ, you're directing them in a much more predictable way, like, that you want them to go, right? And at the same time, it's a lot easier to change direction because now instead of going from here to here on this side to to change direction, you just go from here to here, 
from this click to this click, from this click to this click, right? Instead of going like, oh, I just clicked here. If I want to input back and move back into the other side, I'm going to have to go all the way over here with my mouse. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So start lower focusing my on clicking closer to your champ. A little bit. I, I have 2100 DPI and then 50 mouse. Speed. No, you should have low DPI. I have... I, uh, 800 DPI and then uh, 45 mouse is really good for ADC. This is actually, now that I notice it, that you said it, this is way mm -hmm. too high of DPI to be playing AD. Mm -hmm. you, need, you need to be a lot more accurate with it. Do you have mouse prediction on also or no? No, no. I okay, good. On. Did you did you turn that off through your like system settings as well? With yeah. The, okay, good. Yep. So you have that fixed. Good, good, good. But yeah, start... I would say if, like, on your Smurf... Um, Start getting used to a little lower DPI. I usually don't suggest like uh, huge DPI changes for people right away, but I think if you really want to get good at AD carry, you mm. can't be going 2100 DPI with 50 mouse mm. sensitivity. That's no, just I've, too much. I've had it. I've had it much lower uh, for other games. Okay, so that's good. I, yeah, so you're I used to it in it. other games. Yeah. That's really good. I just when I was playing support, I don't know why, but I had raised it. When I was gotcha. playing support for. A while. It's also healthier for you in the long run because then you're using your arm to move your mouse more instead of your wrist. So you're not going to get carpal tunnel or arth arthritis, etc. as uh, as easily. I wouldn't trim that, honestly. You don't need to because now all you do is like deny a couple minions that might have not been denied earlier if you hit any of the melees. So you can let that keep shoving in because the map is open for you, right? And your team can just get the lane wards and then... Other wards, so like you can just tell your team, hey, let's use our pressure to get wards. And then Yi gets this free farm bot, and then you guys can reset, get items with all the gold that you just got from sieging, from doing whatever you did. Yeah. Come out, get the buffs. After you come out of base, pressure the objectives, utilize your vision to make picks, take these last two outers, and you're on your way to win the game. Mm -hmm. I don't, I can't even remember if, I don't think we had a real 5v5 this whole game. I don't think we get to have, we get, we have one, we just kind of push it in. Sure. But the game started off uh, pretty good. I mean, we fast forwarded through, but the moment the game starts, our top laner typed. Uh, I lost to that Swain last game, <laughs> and I'm like, this is the game to. Record. That's when you say. That's when you say. So we're gonna win against them this game, buddy. And then you give him a little yeah. smiley face. Oh, you gotta give him the Sky Williams swing that neck. What is that? Oh. uh... So it's when you're like overly polite to everyone. You know, like if your teammate oh, puts that, a word that down. dick sucking theory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the dick sucking theory. He yeah. renamed Did you say swing, swing that, that neck? neck? Yeah, that's what that's he calls it now. That's fucking nasty. Holy <laughs> shit. I've never heard that before. Yeah, that's what Sky William calls it now. Instead of the, di <laughs> the dick sucking theory. Oh my god. Theory. Okay. Um, that, zo that zone you. Yeah, you should uh, reset here with the team. This is just a later version of pretty much what uh yeah i was telling you to do earlier you need to tab and check for your team's grievous wounds okay you just shortly tabbed what did you get out of this tab i kind of just look and see who had our if our some if our dares had a tp and he doesn't he has ghost if you I'm should crap. know that before the game even starts brother yeah true because i was gonna see if we should just send four mid and then have one of them split yep Okay. Oh, so, he does have TP. Yeah, it was the other game that the Darius didn't. I think you checked yeah, I, put, I had a Darius. The game, literally, the game after, who had Ghost. Ghost Flash. Gotcha. So I, I think I tell Yi to split, or did I tell him already? I don't know. I think I told Yi to split them later, in a little bit when we start grouping. You know. Yeah, and he was, oh and fuck! He, if I just had my settings clickable from full screen. I could uh, slow mo it. Okay, hold on. Uh, I just really want to see this tab because you haven't tabbed much of this game. Mm. Never thought I'd have to go to 0.25 speed to catch a tab this late in the game, dude. <laughs> you set a you set a fucking coaching record over here. <laughs> I'm just fooling with you. Alright. Oh, I guess we could have done that one, damn. I was going to do the one on the fountain. And I went back that far. We can get it. But yeah, it changes your itemization so much that I really want to be able to see it. 
Okay. Come on. Hit that tab. Oh, you do it after the, you check the tower. All right, here we go. Oh, almighty tab screen. Holy shit. Okay. Um, this guy has what? The Ori has Morellos. I'm guessing she doesn't have Ignite, right? No. If she doesn't have Ignite, then you want a Grievous Wounds here. Because Swain isn't going to get below 40 for her to use the Morella Namicon if there isn't an initial Grievous. No one else has Grievous. If they come back into this game, it's it might honestly be because you didn't get a Grievous Wounds. Okay. And the previous, so the previous so, issues as well, honestly. So I could have just, instead of like just period upgrading the Cutlass, I should have just gone for the Grievous Wounds. Yep, go for the Grievous Wounds and then finish the Bork after. All right, just get the Grievous Wound component, right? Yeah, yeah, because they don't have okay. enough uh, armor for you to like want to get, uh, the, what do you call it, the finish Last Whisper right now, yeah. Yeah, the Lord Mortal Reminder. Or, yeah, Mortal Reminder. There you go. Alright, nobody should be pinging... Oh, I guess he is pinging it to say protect it if they go for it, because he's top. That's a fine split by him. If they go top, you guys have to be ready to take Dragon and then rotate onto the second tier tower. So, this is a wave where... Alright, they're full Fog of War, and you see none of them here, Okay. So, they're not going to contest this drag. And there's a pink ward here that shows you there's nothing there. So, Thresh can go and help Darius with this. Mastery is basing. They're going for him. Okay? 100% yeah. they're going for him. So, you have the time to push this wave out. That yeah. way, if they show into top lane here, like looking for Yi or something like that, you guys can go for second tier. And then if you think they're going to end up going for Nasher, you take an inhib off it. Mm -hmm. And you can honestly trade that. Because then they're not going to be able to do anything with their Nasher. And you have the inhib. And then you have inhib threat for next time Nasher comes up. So then if you just group and take this when it comes up next, then it's free for you because they have to allocate one person to stay there. It's a really good thing no one came to contest it. Because they all decided, we all decided to walk do the slow walk away from the dragon there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do. I do, Oh, I think you might be able to catch. I think I do one big greedy play up here. Which eventually will get me a kill, but I think I also die for it. I'm pretty sure I die for it. Okay, so I see Sivir, and I know she's much weaker than me, so. Well, this is okay, but when you get when you get the ult, you need to leave, dude. You know that they're coming down. You have to know that they're coming down. Mm. Yeah. I got the flash, and then... Holy shit, dude. My god, you remind me so much of me when I was like a, a low diamond high plat AD carry. <laughs> Holy fuck. That's actually unreal. Going for the going for the fight. Going for the fight, yeah, like not just taking the safe guaranteed play. I'm the thing is though, even to this day I'm still I play a lot on emotions. So mm. yeah, that's that's one of the reasons I've never been able to be a pro player myself. Um is that in game, in terms of uh playing I can tilt hard. I don't tilt outwardly in like Flame my teammates and shit, but I'll, uh... Internal, like seeing seeing so. mistakes ends up leading to me making more mistakes myself. And then mm -hmm. before, like I told you, when I was low diamond, before I taught myself to at least have enough discipline not to do things like this, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I used to do shit like that all the time, dude. So, the thing is, this is a very common problem, too. So, if there are any ADs in that range watching out for this, like, you need to realize, and there's a lot that we've talked about in this session, about not only playing with discipline, which I'm, I always preach, and I say with every fucking person that I teach, right? Like, playing with discipline, playing with discipline, playing with discipline. You're going to hear me say it a hundred times through all of my um, coaching uh, sessions, right? But here, there's a lot of really role-specific shit that I told you from the beginning of the game to now that you can actually be using to get your team ahead or yourself ahead without having to fight. So, yeah, yeah you, can, you can just... Take that Sivir ult, that's fine, because you saw them here. You know that you have this one-on-one -on -one with Sivir until she leaves. But take yeah. the ult for what it is, let her run, and then call your team over to get Nasher Vision. Because she has the mm -hmm. base, she's off now. She just, like, you just turned on her off, or you just clicked her off switch, and you just took her off the fucking map. So, everyone can rotate to here, get Denial. If you had, like, you could have even sold this Dorons for uh, Pink Ward. If you mm -hmm. had gone, like, Cutlass here. Well, look, that's a little face. But you, you could have gone Cutlass here, and then the Executioner is here, and then you could go Pink Ward there, help your team deny some vision, and then they have to either face check or just give you the free Nasher. Mm. Mm. 
I wanted to push mid and let myself be able to poke him down. Now that it was pretty strong. Mm -hmm. And then if not, we could rotate. And I had just recently taken off uh, left click on attack move. Mm -hmm. So like this game, it was literally just right clicks. Yeah, you weren't. I I noticed you haven't been left clicking at all, or a clicking. Sorry. Mm. I have to, I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm, you I'm haven't screwed yourself over again. too hard. There was only one time that I really saw you um, missed an auto, and that was in the middle fight, which there were a lot more things that went wrong than holy. Yeah, I. That was my. That's why I should lower my sensitivity. That was just completely me moving it my mouse fucking, too much, exactly. and I eat toward them instead of away. Yep, and that's also, I figure, yeah, actually, now that you mention it, it's probably yeah. also why you keep going so wild with your input, and you can never click just around your champion. Mm, I thought it was some RNG, and then now, you know, now that you get to look at it again, it was, I would my mouse movement. It yeah. was throwing myself. Pro tart? Holy shit, is this like a new pop tart? Yeah, I know. I I no lie. When I wrote that, that's what I read. I was like, "Oh, pro tart." <laughs> All right. I don't I don't got a portrait. I got a pro tart. <laughs> oh, okay. So you guys actually end up winning this game. Yeah, we did. You told me you had been tilted. So like after yeah. this game, so I figured you guys had lost or something. No, no. I got tilted the next game because I went three zero in a lane, and then I gave Draven the game. Okay. Well, yeah, at least you know that. Yeah. And if you yeah. if you look over this, you probably made a lot of the same mistakes in that game that you did here. Because that's what you did this game. You went 3-0 yeah. and then you just started yeah. dying a little bit. But all right, you got any questions? Um, just uh, I mean, maybe I mean I wrote down a lot of the stuff you were mentioning, you know, so I can really look over it now when I play some solo queue. But I guess for practice and grinding, just keep you know probably putting some work in on my Ezreal. I just keep sure. working from there. Work on your Ezreal, and then, um, yeah, write down all the stuff we went over here. This will be obviously on YouTube. I'll get it uploaded, mm -hmm. like, right now. Okay. And then uh, what you can do is, um, yeah, go over each of those games, like I've told every other student so far, right? Mm -hmm. And then each time you go, like, you play a game, um, before, during, and after the game, focus on one point to improve for that game. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then after you okay. focus on that point and you're improved at it, you go on to the next one. And then once you get rusty with the first couple things that you improved on, if at all you do, mm -hmm. then you can just go yeah. back to them over and over. And that's that's the cycle of learning. And especially mm -hmm. in like sports or esports, you're gonna have to um, be able to do that as repetition, right? Okay. So there yeah. there was some potential though, a little bit shown, no? <laughs> oh yeah, like I, I honestly think yeah. you can you can easily get to mid to high diamond by either the end of this season or early next season if you fix these issues. Yeah. It's just about yeah, getting them fixed, but these are I'm not going to lie to you. These are hard issues to fix because a lot of it is discipline and stuff. Habit. But then there are some stuff that obviously you didn't know before like especially about playing lane and then the portrait, your DPI, stuff like that that is micro macro on the game and min maxing that you're going to have to pick up as you go along as well as the discipline. So, mm -hmm. but Fundamentals wise, you're fine. Yeah, it's just you have okay. to get to the point where you're not doing really, really bad shit, like in terms of overextending your lead. You know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and then keep playing like like we did in the OPGG consult consultation. Just keep, keep playing, playing the stuff that I account. told you to play. Yeah, like play those couple champs. Don't roulette. Like if um there are a lot of people, especially in plat, gold, whatever, or even low diamond, that just they get to an elo where they feel like they somewhat belong and then they start rouletting all these champions and it ends up leading to them losing their elo they're not learning anything and then they end up just being worse than they were when they first started because even if you get a little better understanding of some of the champions like if you want to fuck around play some more champions you can do that in blind pick you know but yeah. or like normals in general but you don't mm -hmm. want to you don't want to be playing so many champions in ranked when you don't have expertise on them if yeah. you play champs you have expertise on especially since like Lucian Ezreal, you have 55 to 60 percent win rates on on your OPGG. Mm -hmm. So if you just spam them, sure the win rate might go down over a long period of time because that's just a really good game sample size, and you'll be playing in higher elos with those champions as you go along. But it's going to lead to more consistent gameplay out of you in the long yeah. run, and that's going to lead to a better win rate and more climbing. So, yeah, um, yeah. When it comes to uh, what was I going to say there? 
Yeah, I, that was a problem I had because, you know, I saw all these me the meta changes and the gins coming out and everything. Mm -hmm. And I thought, like, since I was kind of reading a stalemate because of obviously these clear issues that I overdo stuff, you know, mm -hmm. um, I thought that one of the problems was, you know, that I probably had to change my ADCs and it's not. It's just like. It's just you have to play them more, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lucian, yeah. Lucian Ezreal, the ones you're comfortable on, you can go ahead. I've seen a lot of coaches say don't play Ezreal until um, you're like D2, D1 and up. But I don't I don't think that's the case. If you're good at him, if you have a, like a 58% win rate like you do or whatever it is, and then you have like an even better one I think on your other account or whatever it may be, and you have yep. a near 4.0 KDA compared to the other KDAs in Warner A2C, if you're that mm -hmm. comfortable on a champ, then if you just master it, you're going to be able to climb really far. So yeah. you can master okay. that and Lucian. Um, okay. And yeah, you'll be set. So right. keep in touch. If you have questions, let me know. Yeah. And, oh, uh, I me I messaged you something you might that, that that guide that I put there is mine. I don't okay. know why people listen to me when it comes to Ezreal, but okay. um, <laughs> got you. Um, what's it called? What was the last thing I was gonna say? Oh, okay. So I should say because the accounts that I have are that one, this one, my, you know, the Smurf, mm -hmm. and then I have another one that's three O in promos, but I just haven't used it. No, just play just play this on one. This play one. this one, and if you get Rank tilted, up. but you still want to practice your champs, play on your Smurf. Okay. All right, so, man. Yeah, don't worry Thank about you, your Smurf win rate, anything like that. It doesn't matter. Just use that one as like, uh, I still want to learn, but I'm a little tilted. Take a break too. Like, don't just go game after game if you're tilted. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'd say if you lose one game on your main, that doesn't mean, and even if you're tilted from it, you should just walk away, untilt, come back. If you lose two games in a row on your main and you're tilted enough from that, then that's the point where you'd say, okay, I'm going to step away and now I'm going to play on my Smurf. But don't just tilt off of like one game, even sometimes two games. If they were good games and you're like, Okay, I'm still gonna be able to play 100%. I'm not tilted. I know I played well. You don't don't worry about your rank. Don't worry about the LP. If you drop to fucking gold five, or if you climb up to diamond one within the next two to three weeks, I don't give a shit. What I give a shit about is making you the best player that you can be. And then eventually yeah. you're gonna climb as a byproduct. Okay, that's how it works. If you focus okay. on climbing, like if you just wanted to climb, I'd be like, hey, one trick this stupid thing. Uh, duo with a guy that does this and then just by doing that you might be able to get diamond one just because mm -hmm. You're abusing a certain thing, but then you hit a I wall and if you can't like break that wall You might even like demote back down to plat or you're not yeah. gonna be able to advance whatsoever So what you want to focus on improving yeah. first and foremost. Don't worry about your LP. Don't worry about your rank Don't think about it. Don't think what other people think of your win rate even if you go down to 45% win rate just practicing the fundamentals and fixing your bad habits from mm -hmm. before it's going to be worth it in the very long run. Uh, obviously, gotcha. that's a very deep extreme. You're not going to drop down to 40, 45% win rate doing the right shit, right? So, yeah. yeah. That's, that's what my fear was at a point. You know, like, for example, if I did play, you know, like just my Ezra and Lucian, mm -hmm. I felt like maybe once I got to a certain elo, I'd be screwed because that's all I kind of, you know. No, hard. it's all the way around. Yeah, if you're just oh, playing wow. other shit, then you're going to be way more screwed than okay. if you're playing the stuff that you're learning the fundamentals on. Um, like, the game fundamentals on so yeah. you already have the champ fundamentals that's good if you know how to play the champ you want to con consistently play them so that you can just fix your game knowledge as you go along and then right. a little bit of the champ specific role specific shit obviously yep all right so, i'm gonna great I'll, work. Probably, I'll probably do